Nine things I wish I knew about empathy before I started searching for true love. I have always struggled with who I am and how I have been perceived by malicious people. That can sometimes hurt a lot when you know that it's not you. As you already know about emotions, moods and personalities, if no, please go back and watch the video about emotions first to really understand what empathy is all about. I will add the link in the description. You will need that information to get the whole complex perspective. I also did some bogus tests online that really devastated me since they are not real tests. It is important that you use validated tests done by scientists that scrutinize the test continuously. Now, I know about my level of empathy and I have also many ways of validating my empathy level. I do it in real life and through theory. It is also very easy to assess other people's levels of empathy with, with simple conversations about it. Scientists have not settled on if empathy is three parts or only two. The three parts are as follows. Cognitive empathy, affective empathy, ability to disconnect from affective empathy. The ability to disconnect from affective empathy is still debated. Cognitive empathy identifies emotions in others, either by visual cues, voice, touch, or even smell, which is the olfactory sense. Affective empathy is your response to a person's emotions. Affective empathy is mirror neurons and brain cells, basically the same. They force you to respond to the emotion from cognitive empathy. Most malicious or evil, as they also known as personalities, have low affective empathy. That includes psychopathy, Machiavellian narcissism and sadism. This is best described as the ability to disconnect affective empathy when triggered and not letting it play out. You have a prefrontal cortex that deals with everything social and emotional. Behind it you have the insular that partly regulates your behavior according to personality. The data also indicates that your values might reside there. If you're stressed or tired, you will have less of an ability to regulate the responses and break any emotion playing out to the end. But if you meditate or sleep well, you have a much better control over the signal from the insula to the prefrontal cortex. As you remember from the video on how to understand personalities, people low in neuroticism do not react very easily to negative emotions like sadness or anger, but they can still be high in empathy. Empathy is in simple terms a feedback loop. It forces you to identify and mimic other people's emotions. So in a group of people, when someone is having an emotion, others will mimic that so the group feels connected and understood as a group. Empathy is a social trait. That is also why psychopathy, Machiavellian, narcissism and sadism is an antisocial personality disorder or behavior. Empathy is measured with an empathy coefficient, EQ test. Women are about 11% higher than men. They have a mean around 50 on a scale ranging from 0 to 80. Most women, 68.2% are between 38 and 62 on that range. Men have a mean around 41. 68.2% range between 28.5 and 53.5. Autism starts from 0 to 30 when estimating empathy. As you can see yourself, men have a higher probability to be autistic than women. If you are having any concerns about autism, please contact a professional licensed psychologist. Autistic people have low cognitive empathy, whereas psychopathic, Machiavellian, narcissistic and sadistic people have a low affective empathy. You should know that when they did research on real psychopaths in jail and in an MRI, they found that the psychopaths did not have any reactions to children or others being hurt as a mental picture described to them inside the MRI in their ears. 
But when told that they should imagine themselves getting hurt, the part of the brain dedicated to empathy lit up like a fire. I should also say that there is evidence that supports sexual abuse. Boys growing up will show low affective empathy. That does not mean they are psychopaths or Machiavellian, but their behavior will in part mimic that of psychopaths due to lack of affective empathy. There is a validated empathy coefficient EQ test online for this. It is 60 questions, and there is also a shorter version with only 40 questions. That measures empathy in adults. Please do not use on children. The test was created by Simon Baron Cohen, who worked at the Autism Research Center at the University of Cambridge. The test is used by mental health professionals. They use it in assessing the level of social impairment in certain disorders, like autism. But since levels of empathy vary between individuals, even between those without any mental health disorders, it is also okay for use as a casual measure of temperamental empathy by and for the general public. Yes, you can. Take me as an example. I rated low in empathy in an online test that was not validated by real mental health professionals or scientists. Now I know that wasn't true. That is why I started educating myself in this area. All I will say is that I'm higher in empathy than 68.2% of women. I have male and female friends that are at 72 in empathy on a scale up to 80. One way to see and confirm that you are higher in empathy is when you see someone cry. If you start to cry as well, then you might be high in both cognitive empathy and affective empathy. Please remember that you might also be stressed or very tired. The reason behind that is that you cannot break the onset of the emotion. Another way is by the feedback you are getting from partners or friends. If you get feedback that you are without emotions or are callous, well then you might suffer from low affect empathy or cognitive empathy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.